Hello and welcome to Pseudo Code. Entering into LLD interviews or machine coding rounds, we are often faced with one statement problems like design an elevator or design a parking lot or design a traffic control system. How do we use object oriented design techniques to come up with the design and implementation of such problems? While understanding object oriented design, one can also question is object oriented design same as object oriented programming? Let's try to answer all these questions. <laughs> Object-oriented design is not same as object-oriented programming. Let me get out of that way first. Object-oriented programming means coding up a solution or coding up an application using the object-oriented features of a particular language. Object-oriented design is actually the hard part where you model a real-world problem using object-oriented design techniques and concepts like inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, encapsulation, classes, and its their relation with other classes, etc. You might be able to write an object-oriented program while violating these principles, and hence, object-oriented programming would not be same as object-oriented design. But if you understand the object-oriented concepts well, then you can use object-oriented features of a particular language while also using the object-oriented concepts, and hence, you can write a well object oriented design code. Now for this video, we are going to talk about the basics of objects and classes and also we will dig into the NVT technique where we can convert a user requirement to classes. You might have heard or learned definitions of objects and classes like classes are the blueprints of objects, objects are the representation of real world entity and if those definitions confuse you or you might feel that this is not how you understand objects and classes and uh, you are con still confused about what actually is the definition of object or class, you're not alone. Let's try to rectify and understand the definition of these two terms first. Objects. The idea of objects does come from real world objects or physical objects like cars. If we talk about parking lot, then parking slots. If we talk about elevators, then doors, elevator fl uh, floors, different buttons in the elevator, all represent different physical objects. But how do we define what actually is an object? So to summarize, whatever you see in physical world, if it holds some information and certain behaviors, that comprises of an object. So basically, object comprises of two things. Information, which we call as data or attributes. Behaviors, which we call the for the particular property of the object or the behavior of the object for example car is an object and uh, the properties of that car is it has four wheels it has some color it has some particular kind of engine and the behavior of the car is actually the car can drive it can stop those are the behavior of that particular object so any real or physical world entity which comprises of these two things the information and certain behavior can be classified as objects. Now, since we are talking about modeling real world using object oriented design, and since there will be multiple cars, multiple elevators, multiple parking slots, we need something to represent these multiple objects which have different values at a time. There can be two cars, they share same kind of data and same kind of behavior, but their property value can be different. The color of two cars can be different, right? So we need to classify similar kind of objects which have similar behaviors but can have different property values at different point in time. The keyword here is classify because we are categorizing different objects into some kind of classes and that's why classes are called as template of objects or blueprint of objects and that's why we call we uh, that's why we say that we create instance of a class when we say that we are creating an object we say we are creating instance of a class because we are classifying the real world entities into some kind of template and from the template we are deriving the actual world objects with their specific properties at a specific point in time a simple analogy to understand this can be a cookie cutter a cookie cutter looks like this cookie cutter is only one in counting but it can create multiple cookies similarly if you're indian you would know that there is a gujia mold that we use in festivals there is only one gujia mold but you can create multiple gujias out of it so here the cookie cutter and that gujia mold are actually classes and the number of multiple cookies or multiple gujias that these templates are able to make are the objects now that we understand the fundamentals of objects and classes, next step for us 
is to move towards the NVT technique as I call it, call it or the noun verb technique. This is a technique that I have read in various books and also I have learned this technique in my master's program. Uh, I don't know if anybody calls it a noun verb technique but since uh, there is an emphasis of on the nouns and verbs while reading the problem statement so I have uh, memorized it as NVT technique. So let's see how we can apply this technique to break down the real world problem in terms of objects and classes. Let's start with a new set of problem or a new problem uh, and we are going to build the solution for this problem. So the problem is that there is a driving school and they want to come up with a web application for the people who want to learn driving so that the people who are signing up for driving classes can sign up, book driving classes and then go and learn uh, driving. Now let's start with very simple use case here. The use case is like this. A user or a customer applying for a driving license goes to the website of the driving school, selects the slots for the classes he or she wants to take, adds them to cart, checks out and makes the payment and finally gets a confirmation for the classes being booked. Now, try to read this use case twice or thrice and try to find out all the nouns that are available in this particular use case statement. And by identifying nouns, we are actually try trying to identify the real world objects in this use case. The nouns that we can point out are users, slots, license, classes, credit card, etc. And there you go. Those are your classes or as we say in software industry, those are your domain classes, which can later be converted into software classes. Now don't get confused with domain classes and software classes. Those are more or less the same and there can be a slight difference when you're converting the domain classes into software classes. But for now, we will stick to the term classes. So by identifying those nouns, you can actually identify the classes your system is going to have. So we have covered the N of the NVT technique. Now as the next step, let's try to focus on the verbs. Booking a lesson, adding to the cart, making a payment, all these refers to the verb in the use cases. Now, these verbs actually make up for the behavior of those classes or the actual requirements that those classes are going to fulfill. You can also see that these verbs give you an idea either that particular task like checking out or adding lessons to the cart would be done using one class or one object or it might include two or more classes or objects. And hence we can also get a hint here how two different classes are going to interact or what their relation could be. And that would be the next step to find the relation between different classes, whether a class consists of another class or whether a class is a type of another class. In the next video, we are going to dig deep into the different class relations. Using this NVT technique, here is how the class diagram for this one use case is going to look like. For now, I have just kept the class names and different getters and setters along with the properties. In the next video, we will decide and discuss what are the relationship between these different classes and what is the primary responsibility of each class and we will assign the responsibility of each class so as to further model the real world problem. So this is pretty much the core of objects, classes and the NVT technique. I hope that this technique would help you to understand how we can derive uh, or convert the real world problem into the object oriented modeling. If there is any doubt or if any part which is not clear to you, please feel free to add in comments. As an exercise, you can pick any low level design problem. Try to write a use case on your own or try to discuss with your friend and write a use case and then try to convert this, that use case into this, this class model or this NVT technique that we have just discussed. I have added some resources and links in the description. Do check them out as well. Till then, take care. See you in the next video. Thank you.